the safest thing here, but I don't know how, because I kind of get down into this, I don't know if I really want to do a face shield. I did bring my, my other glasses so I could wear my face shield, but I'm going to try it. I'm going to do it like I've been doing it. It's more comfortable, plus we're going to be short on time a little bit. So up until Saturday, I didn't have any success. So since Saturday, at about five o'clock was the success story, and all my all my accidents are up here at the front. The um, there there's just so we're going to talk about threading, and when you're doing threads and you're trying to learn threads, so basically what I had was a stick of wood on there, and I'd cut off a chunk. Good that. Well. I'm just going to have to take these over there. And so I had, <coughs> I just mounted up a stick on the lathe. And I put it in the chuck, and I would cut off enough so I could do a male and a female, and just do a cap and a, essentially a nut and a bolt. And I had done, no, this one. This one was the first try. Uh, two years ago at SWAT, I bought a threading tool from Carter & Sons. And the threads work. They tighten up right at the end. But it doesn't thread. So you can push it on here and then it tightens. So this is the second one. It does the same thing. You push it on and then it gets real tight right there. And so... What I was finding out was you would start on this threads and I would do the male threads first and then do the female threads and when you're mounting this and doing these threads here uh, on the inside you go and you're tight, you're tight, it won't go, won't go, oh now it's too much. and. Uh, so one of the things that I learned, and I know Jim Bob talked about the uh, the shawl pins in the AAW magazine. There's another article in the same magazine that's about the uh, Imperial and the metrics. And so, uh, there's a lot of difference in these two measuring sticks right here. and. Uh, this one is mine. It's an inch. It's divided into tenths. And I had tried to convert it. Uh, the two guys that I watch on YouTube in order to learn how to thread, Alan Batty and uh, Ronald Kane, used the metrics. Batty is in England. So he originates from, from there. So all, everything he does is metric. Everything that comes from over there is metric. All our tools and everything are metric. But here in the United States, we're an inch. And the article goes into a lot of detail about uh, when that, all of that happened and, and why. And, and uh, So over here in the United States, our automobile industry has gone metric. But most, most things, if you go to the store or you go down to the bolt bin and buy parts, they have everything that they need that's still imperial, which is inch. But the difference in the threads is three, three millimeters is kind of the magic number. And that doesn't convert into tenths of an inch. And so when I was doing that with my calipers with tenths of an inch, I was having a lot of failures. And they would, you know, I could make male threads and I could make female threads. One, one comment, um, you can buy digital calipers that will switch back and forth. Well, I, I have some of those, but the battery was dead. Well, <laughs> so, I can't help you with the battery. No, no, but uh, I, in fact, I brought those, but uh, I, I don't use them because I, I like to see it. And then I like to keep it there, and so the digital one, the digital goes off, and I got to turn it back on and all this. This is an extra step. And one, one thing about wood turners is we're lazy. So... I'm just, it's a disclaimer. Oh no, the caliper's right there, and if you got a uh, 
a calculator, you can calculate, change it from English to metric or metric back to English 25.4. Is well, in in tenths, about one and a half tenths is is kind of what three millimeters is, yeah. but it it's not exactly not right. Exactly. So, a lot of <coughs> so, yeah. <laughs> and, and and the other the other thing that I learned is you can't thread every piece of wood. <laughs> Mes mesquite works pretty good. A tight grain wood that. Uh, is dense. Soft maple, no. Hard maple, like a dream. So Russian uh, olive, no. This 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 is a piece of soft maple. It's ambrosia, but I'm gonna pass this around. You can see how the th threads just chewed up. And then uh, this is probably the most successful of the two pucks that I did. That. Uh, I'll pass around there too, and then we'll go we'll go to work. So, one of the things when you're going to pair up threads, is you gotta you gotta start somewhere, and and when I was starting. I did the, uh, I was trying to do the male threads first and then match the female threads. And I was having a lot of difficulties with that. Mark Melton, I spent some time at his shop and then I've spent some, uh, okay. we cut, practiced. I'll cut that out. And we did one and it just, the first time. And I think I, I, Adjusted the threads a couple of times, and it was it was great. So I go back home, and I had some time off last week, and I was working on this, and I think it's about Saturday. I texted Jim Bob, and I said, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do this, because I don't know if I ain't success at it or not. And he says, Do it anyways. It'll 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 be confidence builder to others. So. And then right after that, I started having success. And uh, I think Mark told me to swap. So do the female first and then uh, thread the, the male to match the, the female. And that's where I've been having the most success. The well, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to square off this end. I've, I've already anticipating the time restraints trying to make this at an hour and a half. I already roughed this down and already put a tenon on it that fits in my chuck. My, I've got a uh, record power mini chuck that I got from Turner's Warehouse. Uh, he, has, he has them at SWAT, although he wasn't at SWAT this last year. But I happened to be last spring break in um, Phoenix, Arizona, and his, his store's in Gilbert, which is kind of like Wolford this lover. And so, I picked this up, I picked up some rings for Jim Bob, but I really like it. it it's threaded, it fits the inch and quarter by eight, but uh, it's got a dovetail chuck. So basically all I did was make it round and put a dovetail chuck on there. And now that I've got it chucked, I'm gonna square this end down here. I'm gonna take my 3 8 spindle gouge And you can kind of see it's not it's not the same round as it would be if it between centers, but that's not going to work a whole not going to worry about that a whole lot. that square and really when I get my my pocket here for the threads I want to take so on this one I want it to be chamfered in just ever slightly so tick and then the same thing on the the rim around the <laughs> edge of the male threads and so
Now I'm going to hollow this out just a little bit. And since this is in grain, sometimes it works better to go back the other way. Yes. Yes. I'm just going to go about half inch in here so we can do some threads. Half inch is going to get me about four threads plus the relief cut. I hadn't had much practice turning in front of a crowd like this. Last time I didn't even get to the turning part of my demonstration. No pressure. No pressure. <laughs> yeah. So, one of the things that is 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 kind of a benefit to having all of the shop the club tools at your shop for open shop night is. We've got a box scraper there at the in our tool for doing the boxes, and th this one is mine, and I don't have a problem using that. But I didn't know that y'all wanted me to use that, so it, it doesn't have a handle, and I'm I'm perfectly fine doing that. I don't take big cuts on that, but uh, I thought maybe it might be a little more sanitary to use. For those of you who have never seen it, this box scraper is cut so that your this is a right angle right here, but it's at an angle so that you're not going to get the handle in the way or the back side of the, you're, you're coming in and you want a square for the top of your box. And what, so Randy Thorne, where's he at? So Randy, one of the things that uh, that I have is this tool right here is cut on the back side of my box scraper that is for doing what you do to pair up your yeah. tops. Yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a relief groove, what it's used for. When you go through on the female, uh, in, in, in the male there, when you go through to the back row where you have a little groove back in the back right there, so your tool right there will come out. If it hits right there, it'll tear the, tear the threads up. So it's a relief tool is what it's for there. And it works both on the female and the male. That's what I just tell Jim Burt about usually. And that, that's a good tool to have. I just took a, a little uh, tool right there and just made a, almost a, a L shape and put a groove in there and put it in there and give that relief groove down in there and it's back in there where you but it's 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 there for a purpose to so give you clearance there so when you run up there and hit the back right there and rip the threads out this just clears it off that's what you that's what she was wanting to right yeah. so the first tool we're going to use for threading is this relief tool very important you got to have it and the reason is because when you're cutting these threads in here, 
you don't want to get to the back end of where you've made your box. So we're going to use this little relief colt. It's got a 1 8. And the reason is because when you're cutting these threads in here, you don't want to get to the back end of where you made your box. So we're going to use this little relief colt. It's got a 1 8 of a notch there. And it's just a scraper. And I'm going to come in here and I use it to clean up the bottom here. So the first first thing that we want to have in there, we want to have is a relief cut. We want to have our what what threads are you threading at? What uh... it'll it'll be 16 tooth per inch. So we're we're done with this one for right now. <coughs> That's what you were calling the uh, that relief tool. The the relief tool. And that's a that's a Robert Sorby, and they they have they, they have them on Amazon for seventy bucks because I bought me one. But what you want is you want this to be parallel with the bed of the lathe, the waist. Okay. And so we made our relief cut on the back, but to start the threads, we want to make a little bit of a chamfer here on the front. So I'm going to take. Uh, the easiest thing to do is the box cutter that's laying up here. And I'm just going to put a 45 degree chamfer on there. Just something close. The other thing that I have found is when you get kiln dried wood, it doesn't matter if it threads good or not. If it's dry, it'll break out. So, one of, one of the things I picked up at SWAT was some of this uh, Vince wood surface conditioner. And it's about, the, it's about the best thing that I found. I found, I tried, I tried some of this um, butcher block stuff. It's got some wax in it. Uh, I tried just walnut oil. You're just softening where you're going to thread. Is that the idea? A little bit of lubrication, a little bit of something to to soften it a little bit. Gotcha. And uh, the best thing that I have found is this this Vince's, this stuff that he had this last year at SWAT. It's a special stuff. I, he, he's real secretive about what he put in it, and, and I worked with him all weekend. He didn't tell me. But uh, I know it has mineral oil in it, and that kind of soaks in good. It soaks in better than the, uh, than the walnut oil. And it's, it's a real delicate process. you got to take your time with it. And so, like I said, one of the things that just really, that, that was probably for me the one thing that just, just really got to me was the, the delicacy, the focus that I had to put on it, and, and the, uh, the precision. <clears throat> and, and we're talking about the imperial versus the metric a while ago. One of the things that the metric is used for is to be real precise. And so I borrowed this set of threading tools from Jim Bob, and I've got my Carter and Son tool here that has male and female one on one end and then the other end. And uh, I'll pass this around because this is what we'll what we're going to be using, but I'm not going to use it today because I've, I've had better luck with this. So. Uh, you can kind of look at this and, and uh, get a take a look at that, and then 
you can kind of understand where I'm going. Now, when you're hollowing something out and you've got a curve or you've got a swan neck tool, so one of the things that you use is you put the tool out. And I brought that just for demonstration purposes. I want to put my swan neck behind the tool rest so that the, the curve of the tool is out in front. Otherwise, it's going to always do this. And so you don't have your control with that. Well, would you with, repeat that? So with, your, with the swan neck hollowing tool, the way that this torques, if you don't have it on the back of the tool here, it's going to twist. It's going to torque it around. And your center of cut is right here on this. And you want your center to be in line is essentially what you're doing. Well, that concept works with this. And so what, I, I don't want anything to mess up these teeth because I can't sharpen these teeth. You sharpen across the top here. Okay, so you're not going to be cutting in the grooves and working on these teeth. So I want to make sure that I stay out in front of the tool rest when I'm starting these threads. When I start, I'm going to start at a 45 degrees and I'm going to catch in here and try to catch thread and just work it. And the other thing is the speed. So one of the things that we wood turners like is speed. We like sharp tools. We like fast lathe and slow cut. That's what gets us a good cut with no torn grain. If you go fast with this, you're gonna rip them threads out. And it just depends on how many. So uh, the magic number is about between 200 and 300. You look, watch Alan Batty, he's about 200 to 250. If you watch Ron Kane, he's about 250 to 300. Everybody's kind of different. It's just what feels. Yes. And I don't know if we're on the high speed if I can get down that slow. I'm high, I'll go to 130. There's about 260, and that's, that's pretty close to about what. Mine doesn't have the RPM on my, my I've got an A, the Pyromatic A, and so the notch is just in the bottom eight. Mm -hmm. and since it's a scraper, we want to be on center and I'm a tick high. You want the top edge on center. The top edge on center. The cutting edge. <clears throat> and this, this is where I felt it would be more of a hindrance to wear my face shield. If y'all want me to wear it, I'll wear it. But I just just to get back in here and to get down here where I can see. And it's real critical to be able to see. And so I, I've got my bifocal lenses on. I've got the other readers here. But it's real critical to be able to see, especially with my eyes <coughs> fading, as I'm getting older. I need to see. So, all right, so I've got thread started here, and as I've about got what I can do here at the 45, I'm going to start rotating the tool and catching more thread. And as you catch more thread, you're going to, you want to do the number, the critical number there is about one at a time. If you can make one more a pass, you're doing good. And so the movement here, if I do this, you need to watch this camera. So I'm going to be coming in 
getting started and just doing like this. But as I go in like this, as you start to make your threads, you're going to curve in. And then as you get threads in there where you're working the threads, you're just catching the threads at a throw, slow speed and chasing the threads. Because what you want to do is get to the top of the V. And once you get it to start, now I've got something for the tool to follow. I'm letting, letting it pull the in. Pull the tool in. I'm letting the threads pull the tool in. And um, if you push, it'll chip out. If you push, it'll chip out. And if you're if you if you don't let it find that thread, it'll chew it up. So um, and now that we've gotten down in here a little bit, we've gotten past the what was really wet the first time and I've got this high dollar applicator tool that I can work it in the threads. Have that high dollar or that uh, uh, free from the dentist? No, this was a high dollar. I had to pay for this one at the dollar store. <laughs> I guess the dentist one is actually probably a high dollar. You know, as, as much <laughs> technology and stuff that we have to find a toothbrush that has straight across yeah. <laughs> things and it's a soft one that's not serrated or it doesn't have the rubber things on it is you got you got to look it's, it's a hunting process so I, I just put some more oil on there and let it go let it soak So how many threads right now do you think you have? Uh, looks like three and a half. It's not not quite to the back, either that or I'm t right there at the... I ought to just go with the where the site is because I haven't been able to see the... number and really on this tool right here this front tooth right here is a guide it's not a cutting tool you're cutting back here and on on several of my practice pieces what I get in in it would work for you know, I'm I work for the Water Authority and we do pipe, national pipe threads. If it's not square in here, if it's tapered, you've got national pipe threads. And the thing about national pipe threads is they get tight before you bought them out so that it'll seal up and won't leak. looks like I've got to a place where I'm not you can kind of tell as the sound as it's going in there where it's scraping and when it quits so when it kind of quits that's kind of when you know that you're at the place where you've gotten to where you're, you're cut to the bottom okay when you cut to the bottom and you, you quit getting the the sawdust when you quit getting this stuff and then you look here and I got V so that's probably part of what I was struggling with 
was making threads where I was all the way to the bottom and they don't fit quite as good together and the thing about threads and the pieces that we do with threads so we turn a box we turn a, a lid for an urn or something like that and we want it threaded in there it needs to fit tight it doesn't need to fit so tight that it, you can't get it on and off, but it needs to fit snug and tight so that it fits together. I'm just going to make this 45 a little bit to guide the male threads in. Clean that edge up a little bit. I'm putting ever so slightly a chamfer on that and I was trying to do that with my gouge well ago when I caught it but put ever so slightly I can see that place now where, where I've got some oil in it I can see a line there but uh, we will probably go inside of that and I've got there are five threads on this one right now so It's not going to hurt if I cut one of them off. Alright, so I'm going to take that one out of the chuck. Bryce, maybe it's just me, but I don't understand how you're keeping that as a continuous thread and not overriding and messing it up. Well, that's what that relief groove back there is for. Well, you, you got, you've got the relief groove in the, in the back, but as this goes in, so it finds that V, and then it, it follows that. The, this tool is, these are angled at, at a 16 tooth per inch angle. And that's what that first one, it's not a cutting edge, it's, it's a guide. It, oh, it, no, it follows kinda, the threads through. It's following it. it and it just follows it through. So that if, if you look at that, it's twisted like a thread. But it's also when you have to make multiple passes because you're not putting any pressure on it. The 16 tooth per inch is a 3 8 bolt. 16 by 3 8 by 16. But this is not 3 8 This is quite a bit bigger than that. And it, so it's, I mean, it's, we're going to go with that, but it's it. There's some rough spots in there, and uh, when I put it back on the other, I'll get some more oil on it, and and hopefully it'll thread. But the critical thing is, it needs to be straight in. You need to see the tops of your V's. And the tool doesn't need to bottom out. It, and and if if your tool bottoms out, you're going to lose threads. So the don't idea, ask me how I know. <laughs> <laughs> so the idea is to get that first one in and then the, the tool begins to feed itself. Yes, yeah, yes. yes. And, and one, of, one of the things that I talked about, so now that I turn this around here, one of the things I talked about was I started at a 45. You just get a, like the first one and a half thread. You're not getting very much, but you get the start of this first one. And then you rotate this around and you give it just enough so it catches the next thread. And that gives the tooth something to follow as I come in. But when I finish, I'm at 90 degrees. So I want, or I want to be parallel in here. And every time you present that tool, do you present the tip? To no. The no, I'm, I'm catching it at the back side. Okay. What are the cutters? And, and then rotating it in. Got it. That's that's and, and it's it's a real quick movement because you're not talking very a whole lot of distance, but you're also very slow speed, so that 
you can kind of do that in your your. You, it's a there's a feel there's a definite feel for it. Yeah. Brian, you find that larger openings are easier to thread than small openings. I hadn't tried a larger opening yet. This is about the same size because the the box that I'm making is acorn box, and uh, so so I don't know that yet. <clears throat> this seems like maybe a larger diameter. Or, or, I don't know. Well, for me, being able to see it, being able to get my face down there and see it, makes a lot of difference. Would a mirror help if you had a magnetic magnet mirror to the bottom? I don't think so. Not much really. Because everything is backwards then. <laughs> How many did you have to make to get the feel of the threads? I think there was about, I had four with numbers on them, and the, the ones between the, the four and the success stories went to the fire. So I didn't count them. So I, I don't know. I couldn't tell you. I don't have it. I don't have the evidence. It needed a shot. That's right. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to turn this around here this way because we're going to do the same thing with this one. We want it square across here. Sheer, sheer. One of the things that we talk about in our class all the time, and it, it's something that, that really sticks in my mind because I repeat it, I say it a lot when we have class, is the direction of your tool is always going to follow the bevel. Whatever way you point this bevel, the direction of your tool is going to go that way. So if I put it in here and we get going straight across, it's going to go straight across. If I come this way, it's going to make a top. If I go this way, it's going to bowl it out. But that bevel is the direction of your cut. All right. Now, the next tool here I'm going to use is one that I picked up, and I, I don't use it a whole lot, but... I have found that it works really well for this project, and it's a it's a quarter by quarter um, badan is what they call it. I think is the technical term for it, but it's it's like a, a a heavy skew, but it's a quarter inch, and it just works really well for bringing this down to our uh, desired tenon thickness. Use that little quarter, quarter. Uh, yeah, well, I don't have my sanding tools here for that, but uh, so I just look, I've been just looking at it instead of what I would normally do is hold this here until it fit. But I'm going right here, I get an eyeball of where, and then I'm going to do that. I guess I could transfer it to the other ones, but. What was one of the first things I said was wood turners are lazy? Or may, maybe I am, I don't, the rest of y'all aren't lazy. <laughs> All right. Just make me a little score mark there, kind of watch. I like this tool is because it works like a skew. And the skew for doing tenons on the end is really good. Yeah, I'm, I'm just checking. Uh, 
Did I add three? No, I didn't. I didn't add three. <laughs> so the magic number is three. We're going from female threads to male threads. We're going to add three. So I was right at three centimeters, which is 30 millimeters. So I'm going to go to 33. Okay. So where are we at now? I'm closer. caught that before I made a boo-boo. Okay, so I'm put the chamfer on there, the same as I did on the female threads, so we can start. We're going to do it the same way. We're going to start at a 45 and rotate in, okay? And then I'm put a relief at the back here in a second. So it's, it's close enough, I think. We may have to bring it down, but it's close enough to get started. All right, so what I've been doing on the back side for my relief on the male threads is 16 gate, a sixteenth of an inch farting tool. You want to go in here. There's not a real exact science to the depth. You just want to be below the bottom of your threads. And then uh, I've been giving it. One and a half, so three thirty seconds. And since I know we're a little heavy, I'm going to go a little bit deeper on this, just anticipating. With your normal box, and you're just putting your box and a lid together, you're going to sneak up on it. Well, the same way with this. I use cherry for the the top, which is the female threads, and this is hard maple for the bottom threads. And they they seem to be out, out of the stuff that I practiced on. They seem to be the best, about the best threads. But I'm still putting oil on it. I found that 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 is a a pretty good thing. Now on the to do the male threads, you're cutter is just straight across okay I was coming in on the inside here like this and a lot of people I, Alan Batty he has an armrest that grabs the tool like this to go in but Ronald Kane does not and since I didn't have that tool I had to learn it using my finger so uh, there's not a whole lot of difference between this box scraper and this threaded tool right here. The angle of the bevel is about the same, but this one's got the notches for that 16 2 per inch. So we're at, we're going back with the scraper. 
we're going to be at center with the top of our cut. Get a little closer. All right, so I'm going to be behind this now. I don't know if you can see it through that or not. But I'm going to start this in here, and I start in the middle, not on this edge. I start in the middle right here. And this is essentially what I'm doing on the inside. You might be able to see it a little better on the outside than the inside. But I'm starting on the, not in the front point of the cut. And I just want to groove. And then I'm I've got a place where I chipped it out and I can hear it when it goes around there. It's clicking. I hit I hit the back side and it doesn't it doesn't take much and it's gonna take that wide of your threads just right straight out. And however long you leave it in there, it tears them up. at this there's going to be a spot like right in here where I chewed those threads up when I started I mean it, there's the, there's no ribs on the top there and then even back here at the back where it where this where this was engaged and it hit the back end so I was about right there when I did it and it it ripped it off maybe it, you're too big maybe well, yeah, do it again. I'm, I'm going to have to cut this off because it's it's going to bottom out before I get to the bottom anyway. So I'm cutting I'm cutting those out. But it's better to start and have more and cut them away than it is to do if I try to get it perfect. Because now if I've got if I've got to try to make this perfect, I mean I'm too big. I'm not even catching thread there. So, what we were talking about is sneaking up on it. Yes? Is it better to do the out thread first or the inside thread? Uh-huh. So, when I, was, when I was in Mark's, we did the outside first and we went to the inside. But, when I was having so much problems, I made the inside first, I swapped, and I started doing the inside first and, go, and doing the outside last. That's the way I hit the best luck when I was starting. You can, you can see what you're doing on the outside screen, but you, have, you, you can't see what you're doing on the inside. You're really getting more feel on the inside than on the outside. So I'm going to take this box scraper and just skin the tops of my threads. I'm going to make my chamfer a little better there. And what I'm doing is I'm, I'm working this down to make it fit. It may or may not, it may still be too big, but what I, the important thing is I didn't cut all my thread away so that I still have a thread for that first tooth to go in and follow. So could you use the threading tool to work that down, or is it better just to use a scraper and leave a little bit and start over? You can to some degree. When you, when you have threads and they fit together and they're just real tight, you can use this to do it. Otherwise, it's better to do the other because you're going to... So the you more make tiny little changes. Yes. The, yeah, the, this is not going to be for, for big, heavy changes.
if I wanted to, you know, one of the things we talk about is in class is bringing the bevel in and then and dropping it and doing a cut. If I wanted to, I could bring this in and catch the thread here and it'll ride here without a cut. So that's what I'm doing. But if I drop it, then it starts to scrape it. And I can see the shavings coming over the top of the tool. I can get some down in the bottom of the bevel. I, I use a nylon brush to clean it out just to make sure. What I have found is when it's got chips in there is sometimes that will cause you a problem and destroy your threads. The one thing that we don't want to do is if you get to a place where you catch and you start threading where it's not exactly in the groove then I've got two threads in here well that doesn't fit to nothing because that's not going to thread on our, our lid we're getting close it will almost it will almost start so I'm gonna just a little bit more in a hurry. I get it. I got it, and it's bottomed out. But it's there's the threads, and it's threading on there. And if you whack now, if you whack those, they'll, they'll run smoother. Yes. And, and that's that's where I would typically go. So I've been putting the 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 Vince's wood conditioner on there with the mineral oil, and it soaks down in. It soaks in better than the the walnut oil. And um, You want you want something with a little bit of oil and a little bit of wax, and uh, but I've been everything I've been finishing it with has been the walnut oil, and so now what I would do is I'd come in here. So Bryce, you just mentioned something that reminded me. I meant to mention when I was doing my show and tell on those. Uh, I was talking to Jim Bob about what to use to finish off that uh, those pins with with the Bethlehem olive. And he's, he mentioned the possibility of doing olive oil. And so I made up some of the abrasive wax uh, formula. Instead of using the mineral oil, I used the olive oil in it. And that really worked real well for that. So. Nice. I've, I've got some grapeseed oil too that yeah. I use for stuff that's going to go to people that might be allergic to the nuts. Yeah. <clears throat> Now, 
one about it is the oh I gotta I gotta get the nub out of there and do this. <coughs> If we want to bottom our threads out or get our stuff tight so it's not to the bottom of the thread. Hey, I did a good job. It's square. It's tight, but it's square. You ever try to steel wool or anything on those threads? What no. You you, you're just going to take the top off. Yeah. Now, uh, one, of, one of the things that Jim Bob suggested is taking the, our cream, the diatomaceous earth cream with oil in it, and using that because this has a little bit of an abrasive in it, real mi microfine, and putting that on there, and then working it back and forth if it's if it's tight. But I'll, How about it with a string? I want it tight right now. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this as a jam chuck to turn my lid. So I want it tight right now, and then when I get it closer, I will to I work on my box. And and the other thing is I haven't done anything right here. There will be some stress relief when I take the bottom or take the bowl this out. So. Let's just do that and see how it fits because I'm going to need to go to that point. I've got a, this is a, a hunter cutter on a Rocket Pro that I got from Craft Supply. It's not a, it's not a tool that Hunter sells, but it's one that uh, I got from Craft Supply with the hunter cutter on it. It's a carbide cup cutter. It works great for end grain turning. Got about nine minutes. Okay. And this will make a shear cut. I'm cutting it at a 45 degree instead of the typical carbide cutter that you put in level and straight. Now I have been known to turn my carbide tools to the side just to get a negative rate effect. I'm going to go as deep as I normally would, but that might have given me just enough relief for these threads to fit. Still a little tight. So it, it needs a little oil and wax. My applicator. So at this point, you would hollow that too, once you're happy with your I, I would, I would hollow this out, and uh, the, the thing about, probably with my threads, is they're probably just a little bit tapered, yeah. and so they're tapered heavy at the back, and that's why it's getting tight too. Right. Uh -huh. So I would, I'd run just a little bit right here, square that and up a little bit. make sure that it goes...
just to clean it out at the back. Because what I want to do is get this to where it fits up and I can fit the two pieces of wood together. And that, that's a good fit right there. I mean, right there. So now I would finish my acorn box. I would turn, turn my acorn box. I've done some different things with my lids. This is the one I did last night, and it was my time trial. And uh, I had to hand sand it because I broke it off the lathe. So it was on here like this, and I, I got too far down in here, and it broke when I started sanding, so I had to hand sand it. And yeah, the, the, the thing about... So, is Turner's, I said, I said we're, we're impatient, we're lazy. So who, however many of you got the accelerator because the CA glue gl doesn't glow, grow fast enough. Hey, I got mine where they just send me one every other month. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an accelerator, it just comes every other I've, month. I've used, <laughs> I've used the thin CA glue on the, on the threads and that works but once you make that first cut you've cut the area where your ca glue has penetrated and adhered to so uh, i've essentially got this shape on my cap my lid that i'm going to make on my i'm going to round this off right here at the edge and then come out and make this. And so these right here where it's clipped and they go off to one side, I've got a fancy tool for that. <laughs> and I just clip it. I, I just do it by hand and I clip it. And then I sand it to make it the one-sided turn off to one side. And uh, so at this point, I would turn the rest of the outside of the box. And I'd get it down here and I'd have the acorn, the nut part on this end and the top on this side. And um, I would sand it. I'd finish it with some walnut oil or finish of choice. Walnut oil is easy. Grapeseed oil is easy. You can apply it and it soaks in and it it dries fairly easy and it helps your hands too and then I would I would part it off and I try to leave a little bit of a point on the bottom because that's what the, the acorns do. you have any questions? I think I'm about out of time. Nice shot. <laughs>